So let's start this video with just a little recap of some of the methods that we have studied for graphing lines. And so we have a video where we showed you how when you are given the equation of a line, you can make a table of at least three points and then put, plot those points to make sure they line up in a straight line and then draw the line. So that's one method that we have used very extensively. Then we have another video where we showed you how to find the intercepts of the line with a third point. Make sure those three points line up and then draw the line. We've also talked about how to recognize vertical and horizontal lines, knowing that those are the lines where the equation has only one variable and that if you have x equals a number, that's your vertical line and y equals a number, that's your horizontal line. In this video, we are going to use the slope-intercept form of the line, y equals mx plus b. We're going to use the slope and the y-intercept to graph lines. So let's take a look at our first example. So in our first example, it says identify the slope and the y-intercept and then graph. And we have the line y equals 2x minus 8, which is already in slope-intercept form, so that's handy, isn't it? So again, because this line is already in slope-intercept form, we know that the slope is the coefficient of x, and so the slope is 2. And then we also know that our y-intercept has a y-coordinate of negative 8, because that's that b corresponds to the order paired 0b, which is the y-intercept. So our y-intercept for this particular line is 0, negative 8. Now, how we're going to use this to graph is we're going to use that y-intercept as the starting point. So when we go over to our rectangular coordinate system, when we go over to our graph paper, we're going to start off by graphing that 0, negative 8. So here we go. So we have our grid here labeled with our axes and each tick mark is worth one unit. So 0, negative 8 will be down here, 0, negative 8, and that's going to be our starting point. So you go ahead and put a dot there. Now we're going to talk about this slope. As you know, the slope is this rate rise over run. And what we have is a 2, so we're going to make it into that fraction by putting that 1 under it. So that means that our rise is going to be a positive 2, which means we're going to go up 2, and then our run is going to be a positive 1, which means we're going to go right 1. So from our starting point, 0, negative 8, we're going to rise, go up 2, 1, 2 units, and then we're going to go to the right 1 unit. It's going to put us right here and we're going to put a, another point there. Okay, now we are going to repeat this process to get more points so they line up. So from our next point go up two and then over to the right one and then let's put our other point there. So again we are using our slope, we're going up two, right one. And notice that our line and see, we can do this forever, okay? Up to right one, up to right one. Notice that our line is rising. Did we expect that line to be a line that rises? And I hope you said yes. And why is that? Because our positive slope indicates, a positive slope means that the line rises. So you want to make sure, these are some of the little checks that you can do to make sure that you're on the right track. Okay, so now let's just connect those points with a line, okay? And a good way to check is to pick one of your order pairs that you landed on here and put it back into the equation and see if it checks. For example, I see here the x-intercept. Don't you see it right there? So that x-intercept is 4, 0. Okay, we went through the order pair 4, 0, so we could check it by just taking that 4, 0 and substituting into our original equation, and 0, does that equal 2 times 4, 8 minus 8? Yes, it does. So that checks. Okay, all right, let's try some more examples. And this is one of those skills that the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Okay, here we go. 
In this example, we have the equation y equals negative 3x plus 7, which is in slope-intercept form. So that means that we can read off the slope from the coefficient of x. And so the slope is negative 3. And if we write that as a fraction, negative 3 over 1, remembering our rise over run, this time because we have a negative 3, do you see that, the negative 3? That means that we're going to go down 3. And then over a positive 1 means we're going to go right 1. Over a positive 1 means we're going to go right 1. OK, that's our slope. We're going to use that in a minute. But first, we need a starting point. And for that, we're going to use our y-intercept. The y-coordinate of the y-intercept is 7, which is our constant there. And so our y-intercept is 0, 7. And so we're going to use that as a starting point. So let's go to our grid. And let's find 0, 7. So again, the y-intercept is your starting point. And then you use your rise over run, your slope, to find more points. OK, so 0, 7, we're going to assume a scale of 1 with this grid again. So let's go find 0, 7, which is right here. That's our starting point, 0, 7. OK, our y-intercept. Now, from 0, 7, we are going to go down 3 down 3 and to the right 1. Down 3 and to the right 1 puts us right here. Okay, and then let's repeat the process. Let's go down 3 and right 1. And that puts us right here. And then down 3 and right 1. And that puts us there. Everything's lining up nicely. Did we expect this line to be a falling line, a line that goes downhill? I hope you said yes. And why is that? Yes, because our slope is negative. OK, and again, notice how even though I just stopped my little order pairs here in this point, 3, negative 2, that I stopped it there, notice that my line does continue my drawing on either end, and I put the arrows. So please make sure that as you're drawing these graphs, you don't stop and make this a line segment. These lines continue. That's something that I see sometimes in students' paper. So again, let's check that, by the way. Let's use that 3, negative 2 point to see if we are on track here. And again, that means that if I substitute into the original equation my x, y that I just picked from my graph that I get a true statement. So I get negative 2 equals negative 9 plus 7 and that is definitely a true statement. So, oh, and another note here for your notes. Negative slope means falling line, right? Or downhill line, however you want to call that. Oh, not down line, downhill. Downhill line. Okay, let's do another example. And in this example, our linear equation is not in slope-intercept form. Do you recognize this as a standard form? ax plus by equals c. That's called standard form. So our first step will be to rewrite our equation in slope-intercept form. And that's what we're going to do first, which means that basically we have to solve for y. So we get 5y equals negative 4x plus 15 when I subtract 4x to move it to the other side of the equation. And now I'm going to divide every term by this 5. So now I arrived at y equals negative 4 fifths x plus 3. And from that equation, we can tell that the slope will be negative 4 fifths. Let's put it over here. So in our rise over run, we are going to go down 4 and write 5. And so we expect a falling line, don't we? We expect a downhill line since our slope is negative. OK, and then our starting point is going to be our 0, 3. So that is our starting point, 0, 3. So now we'll go over to our grid. We're going to assume that the scale is one unit. And we're going to find the starting point, which is 0, 3. And there's my starting point, my y-intercept. And this time we're going to go down 4, so down 4, and write 5. And that's going to put an order pair there. And we can do that again, can't we? Down 4, 
down four and right five. Now notice how I ran out of graph paper here. So if I want to get the points on the left side of the starting point, I can reverse both of these. I can go up four, I can go up four and left five. Okay, so we're going to try that on the other side of the starting point. We will go up four and left five. And notice how this point will line up with our other points. Okay, so now let's go ahead and join those four points with a straight line and arrows on the end. And there is our falling line, which we expected, didn't we? Because we had a negative slope. And again, to check this, we would just pick one of our new points and substitute into the original equation. So we'll, we'll do one of those. Let's do this point over here that looks to be 5, negative 1. So 5, negative 1 for a check. And I would go right back to the original equation in standard form so that you are sure that you've been graphing that line. And notice how here we get 20 minus 5 and that does equal 15 so that checks. So always a good idea especially if you're in a test situation to check your work. Okay I've got one more here. Okay we've got here in our last problem another equation in standard form that we are going to first rewrite as slope intercept form so that we can solve for y and then read our slope and y intercept from the equation. So I get negative 4y equals negative x plus 12 and then we're going to divide everything by a negative 4. And do make sure that when you do this division you include that negative because in slope intercept form our y is a 1y, not a negative y. Okay, so it needs to be 1y. Okay, these two negatives here is, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 fourth x, right, because that's what x over 4 means. And then 12 divided by negative 4 is a negative 3. So here we have our slope, which is 1 fourth. It's a positive slope, isn't it? So that means that our line will be a rising line. We'll be going up 1 and right 4. Okay, then our y-intercept is 0, negative 3. That's our starting point. We're going to go over to our grid right now, assuming a scale of 1. Everything is worth 1. And we go to 0, negative 3. So that's right here. And we are going to go up 1 over 4. So that's right here. And we're going to repeat that up 1 over 4, put another point, or we could go down 1, left 4, right? Exact opposite, so going back to my starting point, I could go down 1, left 4 to put another point, okay? And I could go down 1, left 4. And there's So there's quite a few points, okay? And our line is rising, and notice how it's not rising as steep as some of the other lines we've graphed today because our slope one-fourth is a small slope, isn't it? So not as steep this time. Okay, let's join these into our line. All right, and I will leave the check up to you. Really, these are not bad problems to do, just practice. Okay, let's go to the next video.